Alrighty folks, uh, time for a bit of an update on the land yacht. Um, firstly I'd like to apologise, I've been away for the past few weeks. Um, I've had some personal things to deal with. Uh, just some changes in my life and career. Well, it's all for the better. So, anyhow, uh, we're back at the yacht. And um, over the weekend there and a bit this evening, um, I've managed to get quite a bit done. So, uh, first thing is we've removed the old fast charging port. Um, arguably the hardest uh, component to remove, uh, second only to the petrol tank itself. Um, so what we have been doing is here on the fuel input side of things has been installing, um, well installing the cabling harness in here for the charging port. Now uh, with this car um, we've got quite a large capacity battery in excess of 35 kilowatt hours so we need to be able to charge that and I like to be able to charge it quickly so we're at the minute looking for the 7 pin 63 amp um, 62196 type 2 inlet uh, that would be the type that's uh, used on the Renault Zoe uh, for AC fast charging, so I'm trying to track that down. Uh, I can get the 32 amp one uh, pretty much mail order, but the 63 is proving to be a little bit more um, elusive, so if anyone has any clues about where a mere human being could actually purchase one of those, then uh, please let me know. Um, but in the meantime, uh, we've been installing the cabling harnesses in the car, uh, both for charging and for hooking the front and rear uh, battery boxes up. So the cable that I've chosen to install here at this end is 5 by 16 Silflex uh, cable. Um, so this lets me have uh, this lets me have um, um, earth neutral and uh, three phase power. I've also got a little 0.75 uh, single core here for the control pilot signal. So that comes in to the boot area here where we have our 12 volt um, battery for supplying all the normal 12 volt systems in the car. We'll, we'll run through that in a minute. Uh, so it comes in there just uh, behind that battery and uh, runs around uh, runs around behind that and comes down into the wheel well area uh, which is a real mess at the minute and I've removed the wheel well battery box just to accommodate all this so what we have is obviously we have the big 16 square Silflex uh, 5 core coming in here and then hopefully be able to see in the corner here we have a large uh, 50 millimeter steel reinforced flexible conduit that uh, I have ran from the front to the back of the car to carry uh, various power and signal cables. So what we have in that conduit uh, are 270 square um, cables for our batteries. <coughs> We have a 7 core, 7x1.5 uh, uh, YY cable just for low power stuff, communications, that kind of thing. And we have two um, large Silflex cables, um, one a 3x6 and one a 5x2.5, which is just what I, I happen to have. And they'll be used for transferring AC uh, power from the charging port here on the back of the car up to the front of the car where the uh, charger will be installed so run up to the front we'll be able to see where we have our 
uh, conduit coming up here just alongside the traction motor and uh, various cables have been uh, just cut to length approximately uh, just to tidy up the 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 engine bay motor bay or whatever it's uh, called in one of these cars so that uh, conduit there is running underneath the car so I'll hop underneath in a minute and uh, go through the installation of that and I was quite lucky uh, with that conduit in so far as that uh, I was able to clamp it up to existing uh, mounting points underneath the car uh, that would have been uh, used for the original exhaust system. Uh, so with this cable, uh, I suppose, suppose cable bundle installed here, it's going to allow me to start installing and filling the rear battery boxes and bringing up the voltage to full uh, pack potential and getting some work done on the charger. Uh, for to be installed in the front. Now what I also did um, for the 12 volt systems in the car was I had been using a little 40 amp hour um, monoblock 12 volt uh, Winston battery. Uh, but I decided to upgrade that to four of the CA180 FI cells for running all of the 12 volt systems. Um, they'll have their own Charger will be probably a 50 amp charger. I'm just using a little, uh, just using a little 20 amp at the minute just to keep them uh, topped up. They've been bottom balanced and charged to nominally 14.2 volts. Uh, it's about 3.5 per cell, and uh, they fit in there quite neatly in where the original uh, starting battery was fitted to this car. I have some threaded rod in there as well, so we'll be installing a tie, a tie down and some um, yeah, some heating mat in there for uh, warming them up during the cold weather. So with that said, what I'll do is I'll hop in, in underneath the car now and we'll run through the conduit placement and um, that'll be us. So our conduit emerges here which is a hole that I've drilled in the uh, spare wheel well on the car uh, just in the rear boot area and we'll be sealing around that with some uh, PU um, adhesive commonly known as tiger seal in this part of the world and uh, runs underneath the car here and we come up around the differential area here and uh, we literally pick up one of the old um, fuel tank mounts and a nice stainless uh, cap screw there with a stainless p-clip holds that in place come up past the tank area um, up to where we would have had one of the Exhaust hangers, we've installed again two of the P-clips uh, with again stainless bolts. And following the drive shaft tunnel, another P-clip here, uh, again bolted into an existing uh, mounting point. And we come up over the gearbox cross beam with the cable following in there, up around the Coming into the the engine compartment now, and uh, last of the P clips there is mounted on the side of the traction mo motor. So that's the run. I'll try and get a more of a bit of a view there. Maybe if we can see it um, as it runs underneath the car, um, carrying the cables uh, that we described earlier up underneath and uh, from back to front and from front to back.